So hey guys, welcome to our channel Fiction Domain. And also welcome to the another amazing story on what if Naruto had the legacy of Inuzuka clan. Here is short summary. Naruto is born to the Inuzuka clan of the Leaf Village, but is also the next reincarnation of an ancient and powerful ancestor. With the power of his ancestor and the support of his family, he shall bring the Inuzuka name to new heights, while helping a girl with a terrible burden reach her dreams. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. In the Inuzuka clan compound, just an hour after the end of the Kaiubi attack, we find an Inuzuka woman giving birth while squeezing her husband's hand. The husband was doing his best to be supportive, but he was sure that he would never use his right hand again once his wife was done with it. The doctor and nurse that were delivering the baby both felt sympathetic to the man as they could see he wanted to cry out in pain but was holding it in in order to not irritate his wife, he deserved a husband of the year award. Come on, get this pup out of me already. Screamed the woman. The woman in question had fair skin, shoulder-length spiky brown hair, black eyes, and the red Inuzuka fang markings on her cheeks. She is currently wearing a hospital gown. This woman is Yuna Inuzuka and as mentioned earlier she is currently giving birth to her first child. You're doing fine in yuzuka san just a few more pushes and your child should be here. Said the doctor. A few minutes later they finally heard the sound of a baby's cry. Toga, after finally getting his hand out of his wife's grip, cut the umbilical cord before the doctor handed the baby to the nurse to get cleaned, weighed, and checked. You did great, Yuna. Said Toga knowing that now it was safe to talk while the doctor quietly bandaged his hand. Toga had lightly tanned skin, brown eyes, spiky black hair, and the red in yuzuka fang markings on his cheeks. He wore black shinobi sandals, black pants, and a long-sleeved dark blue shirt with a Kanoha headband on his forehead. Congratulations, it's a healthy baby boy. Said the nurse with a smile as she handed the boy to his mother. Taking her son into her arms, Yuna moved the blanket that he was wrapped in to finally see what he looked like, what she and Toga saw surprised them greatly. He had a pinkish skin tone like all newborns, silver hair, they couldn't see his eyes since he hadn't opened them yet, and in the middle of his forehead facing the left is a purple crescent moon. The shock quickly wore off for Toga, and he smiled proudly at his son, while Yuna continued to be shocked. Toga, you don't think that he's the one do you? Asked Yuna. I don't think, I know he's the one. No other Inuzuka has had that birthmark in a long time, plus look at my name, it only makes sense that my son would be the one. Said Toga with his smile only getting bigger. Well I guess we'll know for sure when he's older, until then we still need to name him and then show him to Tsum-sama when she gets back from the council meeting. Said Yuna. With that they started saying names to the baby, but none of them got a reaction from him, though it took a while they finally got a reaction in the form of a small giggle. Oh, so you like the name Naruto my little pup, very well you shall be Naruto in Yuzuka, the maelstrom of Dog Hill. Said Yuna with Toga nodding. Two hours later Tsu and Yuzuka finally came back from the council meeting, only to come face to face with Yuna and Toga, she quickly noticed the bundle in Yuna's arms. Oh Yuna, Toga, I see the pup finally came. Said Tsu with a tired smile. Yes he did, though there is something you should see. Tsum sama this is our son, Naruto in Yuzuka. Said Yuna in a serious voice. Tsum noted the serious voice and looked at Naruto, and just like his parents, she too became shocked at his appearance. Naruto then started to move before he opened his eyes and looked at his mother and father. Yuan and Toga saw that his eyes were golden color with vertical slit pupils. Naruto cooed at them before he looked at Tsum and just seemed to stare at her. Tsum stared back at him wondering what he was doing, after a few moments Naruto gave a little coo before closing his eyes and going back to sleep. Well that was different. Said Tsum. I'll say, it was almost like he was sizing you up, then decided to just go to sleep. Said Yuna. Oh yeah he's the one, my boy just stared down and then blew off Tsum-sama. Now the Inuzuka will rise to even greater heights than the Ichiha and Senju. Said Toga. Oh is that what the pup did? He blew me off. Said Tsum with a tick mark on her head. As if to respond to this Naruto woke up, started at Tsum for a few moments again, and then went back to sleep. He did it again. Yelled Toga in pride, his son was only a few hours old and was already acting like an alpha. Toga don't yell, our pup needs his sleep. Said Yuna as she started walking away with Toga quickly following her. Tsum stood there in shock at the fact that she was blown off twice and by a newborn at that. She then smirked as she thought about what this could mean for the Inuzuka clan. Let's see what you've got in the future, Naruto Inuzuka. Said Tsum before walking off to her own house within the compound. Naruto's Mindscape. In the white void of the newborn Naruto's mindscape, baby Naruto lay on the ground while a tall figure stood over him. The figure was a man that looked like an older version of Naruto wearing what looked like noble clothes and armor, though this man had two dark red stripes on either side of his face. 
Naruto Inuzuka, you have been chosen by this Esamaru to raise the Inuzuka clan, my clan, to heights that they haven't seen since my time in this world. Well there were two I chose before you, they did not have the potential that you do for I see that you may actually be able to match this Esamaru one day. Until then I gift you with my swords, my abilities and my knowledge, you will be similar to me in many ways, but you shall be your own person with your own dreams. I shall guide you from within until I see that you are ready. Said Sesameru before he turned into light and sank into the baby Naruto. Five years later. Naruto, Naruto where are you? Yelled Yuna as she ran around the village looking for her lost son. Beside her was her partner, a large black dog by the name of Kurikas, and he was helping his mistress find her wayward pup before something bad could happen to him. Toga and his partner would have been helping, but they were out on a mission. Suddenly they were joined by Tsum and her partner Kurumaru. Yuna, have you found him yet? Asked Tsum. Not yet and I'm really starting to worry about him, he's never been out of my sight for this long before. Said Yuna. I'm guessing that since you're asking me then that means that the others haven't found him either then. Said Yuna. Yeah, I checked with the others before I came to find you, but they haven't found him either. Said Tsum. Ma'am I've found his scent. Said Kurumaru. That's great, lead the way Kurumaru. Said Tsum as they followed Kurumaru. They him through the village until he lead them to training ground number 44 aka the forest of death. The forest of death, what the hell is my baby doing in the forest of death? Screamed Yuna in terror. I don't know, but we need to get that Tsum wasn't able to finish as they saw and heard the bushes move before they saw Naruto walk out of the forest with a rather large wolf pup behind him, the pup was pure white with bright blue eyes and had what looked like three sheathed swords strapped to its back. Naruto was a little taller than the average five-year-old, his skin was fair, his hair reached his lower back and was slightly spiky, and he had the red Inuzuka fang markings on his cheeks. For clothes he wore a white kimono tops with dark blue at the end of the sleeves, black hakama pants and black sandals. Once Naruto saw them he gave them a smile and a wave, showing that his canines were fangs and that his nails were like claws. Hi mom, hi Kurikas, hi Tsum-chan, hi Kurumaru. Said Naruto. Naruto was quickly grabbed by his mother and bonked on the head. Ow, mom why did you hit me? Asked Naruto as he rubbed his head. Don't ask me stupid questions Naruto, what were you doing in that forest? Said Yuna before asking her question. Well you said I was to get my partner today so I went and got her, her name is Shiro. Said Naruto as he pointed to the wolf pup. Well well I was supposed to give you your partner I'm glad you found one anyway, what are those sword on Shiro's back? Asked Yuna. Oh those are special swords I fell calling to me while I was looking for Shiro, their names are Tensiga, Takujin, and Bakusega. Said Naruto. Everyone stood stiff as they heard those names as only an Inuzuka would know the weight behind those names. Naruto, do you have any idea what this means? Asked Tsum as she looked from him to the swords on Shiro's back. Yes, those swords plus my looks mean that I truly am the next chosen to become a Sesameru. Said Naruto becoming serious as Shiro moved closer to him. Naruto how do you know this as I've never told you of Lord Sesameru? Asked Yuna. The spirit of our ancestor, Lord Sesameru, has been talking to me in my dreams for over a year now, helping me sort through the memories and knowledge he has given me. Said Naruto. Did he say anything to about a mission, from the scrolls I have on this Lord Sesameru usually has a mission for the next Sesameru? Asked Tsum. The only mission he gave me was to make the Inuzuka name rise to heights it hasn't seen since his time in this world. Other than that he said to do as I please. Said Naruto. Well that just means that I can start your training and I don't have to hold back. Said Yuna with a dark smirk on her face. Naruto shivered at the look and knew he would be in pain for a long time. Three years later. An eight-year-old Naruto sat in the academy on his first day looking at the other students. Only the clan heirs, a civilian named Sakura and another girl named Mido caught his attention. Throughout the day Naruto noticed that some of the teachers treated Mido differently from the other students, they ignored her when she had a question, they glared at her, called on her to answer questions there was no way she could answer, and taught her the wrong stances into jutsu. At the end of the school day Naruto stayed behind in order to talk with Mido, she seemed like a nice girl, so he didn't know why the teachers were being so mean and unfair to her. When he finally saw Mido she was sitting a swing alone looking really depressed as she watched everyone else get picked up by their parents. Mido was a rather short girl with fair skin, bright blue eyes, three whisker marks on each cheek, and long blonde hair with red highlights done in pigtails. She wore black sandals, a knee-length black skirt, a long-sleeved orange shirt with a red swirl on the back, and a pair of green goggles around her neck. Hi, you're Mido Yuzumaki, right? Asked Naruto. Mido looked up in surprise that someone actually came to talk to her, since most parents kept their children away from her for some reason. Why yeah, that's me. Said Mido a little nervous. I'm Naruto Inuzuka and this is my partner Shiro, would you like to be friends? Asked Naruto. 
Naruto was a very direct person, much like the rest of his clan, plus Mito looked like she needed a friend. Really? Asked Mito with excitement at the thought of having a friend. Yeah, you seem like a nice girl, so I don't see why not. Said Naruto before he was caught in a tight hug by Mito. Thank you, I'd love to be friends. Shouted Mito. Naruto simply chuckled at her and then led her to the Inuzuka compound, along the way Naruto noticed that a lot of the adults were glaring at Mito, and Mito was attempting to ignore them. Naruto decided not to say anything for now, but he would be sure to ask his mom about this later, he'd also ask why Mito smelled so much like a fox. Once they got to Naruto's house they found his mom and dad sitting on the couch with their partners next to them. Yuna was reading a book while Toga was watching TV. Hi mom, hi dad, hi Kurikas, hi Kuramizu. I'd like all of you to meet my new friend Mito Yuzumaki. Said Naruto as he introduced Mito. Hi. Said Mito nervously. Well hello Mito, it's nice to meet you. Said Yuna. Nice to meet you Mito. Said Toga. So, come sit and tell me how school went. Said Yuna. Mito and Naruto nodded and did as asked. Well school was interesting to say the least, the teachers had us unlock our chakra today, though they were surprised to hear that I had already unlocked it, and I was surprised to find out that Mito has more chakra than I do said Naruto. This made both Yuna and Toga widen their eyes in shock. Naruto had the reserves of a jonin, with Mito having more chakra than him, then that meant that she either had Anbu level reserves or maybe even cage level, but since she was a Jinchuriki, it shouldn't have been so shocking. Wow Mito, you'll be a chakra powerhouse by the time you graduate. Hey you could actually be a challenge for Naruto. Said Toga. Yuna was about to say something before she noticed that Naruto looked deep in thought and kept taking glances at Mito. Is he piecing everything together right now, I swear if I didn't push that boy out of my vagina, I would think he was a Nara, a much more motivated Nara, but a Nara all the same. Thought Yuna. What are you thinking about Naruto? Asked Yuna. Naruto didn't answer at first as he was still going over everything in his head. He looked at Mito who was also looking at him, and his eyes widened at what he saw. Her blue eyes and mostly blonde hair was a combination that was rare in the village if you weren't Yamanaka, and though her face was a bit round thanks to her age, if he narrowed her features a bit, it would match a face he saw pretty much every day. Once he figured that out his mind quickly went to her age. Mito was the same age as him, and his mom told him he was born only a few hours after the Kaiubi attack, Naruto then started thinking about that fact that Mito smelled like a fox, and the fact that most adults seemed to hate her. Throughout his thought process his eyes only got wider and wider, before his eyes narrowed in rage. This unnerved Mito as her new friend just stared at her in shock for a while, and all of a sudden looked mad. Shiro, can you go get back Yusega for me please? Asked Naruto. Shiro nodded and was about to do just that, but was stopped by Yuna. Don't you move Shiro. Naruto what are you going to do with that sword? Said Yuna before asking her question. Kill a lot of people. Said Naruto bluntly with a straight face and serious voice, much like Sesameru. No, you're going to stay right here and talk about what you learned, then I'll decide if you can go kill a lot of people. Said Yuna as she knew what Bakusega could do. Toga sweat dropped at his wife along with Mito, neither of them thought it was good parenting to even think of letting an 8-year-old kill a lot of people. Mito also wondered why he wanted to kill a lot of people. Fine, I'll talk. First I'm sorry for asking this Mito, but are you an orphan? Asked Naruto. Why yes. Said Mito in a sad voice while looking down. Alright that puts everything in order. Mito I know you're smarter than you let everyone see. Said Naruto. How did you know? Said Mito while looking up at Naruto in shock, no one had seen through her mask before. I know because every time the teachers at school would teach you something wrong, I could see the irritation in your eyes, and I also saw your body hesitate to do what they were teaching. This shows that not only do you know that they were teaching the wrong thing, but your very body knows that they are teaching the wrong thing. I also know why everyone seems to hate you. Said Naruto making Mito's eyes widen, while well, Yuna and Toga simply listened since this was a secret that they couldn't talk about. I know why they hate me, I was born on the day of the Kaiubi attack, and because of that they see me as a bad omen and a reminder of what they lost. Said Mito. That's a very mature way of looking at things Mito and you're close to the truth, but you're off a little bit, plus if that were true, they would hate me as well since I was born on the same day. Mito, I've been training to be a ninja since I was five, and because of that I've learned a lot about the ninja world through books. I can say without a shred of doubt that you are what people call a Jinchuriki or a person with a tailed beast, like the Kaiubi, sealed inside of them. Said Naruto. And inside me? Are you sure? Asked Mito. Yes I'm sure, you have monstrous chakra reserves, and you smell of a fox. The last thing is I know who your parents are or at least I know who your father is and to be honest, I'm surprised no one else has put it together. Said Naruto. Now not only was Mito interested, but so were Yuna and Toga. 
But how can you know? No, never mind I don't care how you know, just please tell me. Even the Hokage wouldn't tell me when I asked, he would always say he didn't know who my parents were. Said Mido. She knew he was lying to her, since he was Hokage he had to know who was in his village especially ninja. But now she had a friend willing to tell her the truth. Your father was the fourth Hokage Minato Namikas, I'm guessing he lied to you so that you'd be protected from your father's enemies, but if he can't even protect you from the people within the village, then I don't see a point to why you shouldn't know. Said Naruto. Mido, Yuna, and Toga were shocked to hear this, none more than Mido. Mido looked up to the fourth Hokage as a hero, to know that her hero was her father shook her world to its core. Yuna and Toga looked at Mido closely and compared it to the Hokage monument and had to resist slapping themselves for not seeing it soon. Well I'll be damned, you're like a female version of him, but with whiskers and red highlights. Said Toga. I swear Nari-chan you have the mind of Inara. Said Yuna. Mido stood up and slowly walked over to Naruto before hugging him tightly. Naruto was shocked by this, but hugged her back after a moment and then felt a wet spot forming on his shoulder. Thank you Naruto. All my life people have glared at me, sold me overpriced food, overpriced clothes, called me names, completely ignored me, and lied to me. You though, you came from nowhere and asked me to be your friend, and now you've told me truths about myself that I've always wanted to know. I don't know how I'll ever repay you. Said Mido. You don't have to repay me Mido, but if you really want to then all you have to do is let me help you. Said Naruto. This was his first friend outside of the clan, and now that he knew how people were treating her, he was not going to let it stand. Help me how? Asked Mido. Instead of answering her directly he turned to his mother and asked her a question. Mom, can Mido train with us from now on? Asked Naruto. Mido was shocked at this, but still looked over to Yuna and hoped that she would say yes. She had already figured out today that the academy wouldn't be of any help to her. I don't know Neru-chan, she's not an Inuzuka, so I can't teach her any of our techniques. Said Yuna. You don't have to, she can learn chakra control with me, spar with me and tojutsu, and learn a lot of non-clan related jutsu. I'll even ask. Gai-sensei if he would mind teaching one more person. Said Naruto with a shiver at the end. Naruto had started training with Might Guy in order to both improve his tojutsu and learn new tojutsu styles, plus while Guy's training was crazy, he had to admit that it did wonders for his speed and strength. Who's Gai-sensei? Asked Mido. There are no words to describe Gai-sensei, and when you meet him you'll know why I say that. Said Naruto. Mido simply nodded to this before turning back to Yuna for her answer. Fine, she can train with you and I'll teach her what I can. Your father will help too. Said Yuna. Toga didn't argue with his wife since he knew better. Good, I would also like it if Mido stayed here with us. Said Naruto. Why? Asked Yuna and Mido at the same time. I believe that if the villagers are doing all those things to Mido, then she might not be living in the best place. Said Naruto. Well you're not wrong, I live alone in the red light district. Said Mido. Okay well I don't approve of an 8 year old living alone in the red light district, I don't think I can allow her to live here. Since you figured out about the Kaiubi on your own I can tell you that all clans have been forbidden from adopting her since it would create an imbalance of power. Said Toga. Naruto stayed quiet for a little bit as he thought on this before he came up with an answer. We're not adopting her merely allowing a young child to stay with us in a safe environment, she won't be learning Inuzuka secrets or taking the Inuzuka name, and if nothing else works, you can simply say that she's having a sleepover with me. Said Naruto. Hein, I can see your mind's made up about this, so if you'll excuse me I'll go talk to Tsum about this. Said Yuna. Thank you for doing this for me Naruto. Said Mido with a small blush on her cheeks as this was the nicest thing anyone had ever done for her and they had just met today. No problem Mido. Said Naruto. Eight years later. The sound of metal clashing against metal could be heard coming from the training grounds of the Inuzuka compound as two blurs fraught against each other. Once the blurs stopped their battle for a moment it revealed that the blurs were actually 16-year-olds Naruto and Mido, the two of them just finishing their spar. The years have done wonders for Mido as she has grown into a beautiful young woman. She stood at 5'7 with peach-colored skin, her hair still in pigtails that reached her hips, a toned and curvy figure, long legs, thick thighs, wide hips, a thick bubble butt, and DD cup breasts. Her clothes she wore black low heel sandals, a knee-length black, armored plated, battle skirt with black tights underneath, a short-sleeved mesh top under an orange shirt with detached sleeves, and on each of her wrists is a gold bracelet with four sapphires and four rubies embedded in them, gifts from Naruto. In her hands is her weapon of choice, a large fang-like sword with a gray blade, a patch of white fur acting as the guard, a brown handle, and a gold pommel. This blade is known as the Tasega, the counterpart to Naruto's Tensega. They had found the blade when Naruto took Mido to train in the Forest of Death, well Mido found it as it just seemed to call out to her much like how Naruto's did. 
they later found out that the sword originally belonged to Sesamera's brother in Ayasha and could only be used by those of his blood and that the sword chose. Wanting more information on the subject Naruto meditated in order to speak to Sesameru, and once he made contact, he found out that while Sesameru made the Inuzuka clan, Inayasha went off and married a priestess, and somewhere down the line Inayasha's blood married into the Uzumaki clan. Sesameru also informed Naruto that since Tasega now had a master, or mistress as it were, that much like how Naruto and he were connected and could talk the same would become true for Mido and Inayasha. When that happened Naruto told Mido of Sesameru so that she'd know she wasn't alone in having an ancient warrior talk to you in your dreams. The years were great for Mido's training as well thanks to Naruto and his family. Naruto had kept his promise and introduced her to Might Guy for Tijutsu training, and he was all too eager to have yet another person to teach, though Mido did develop nightmares about green spandex, huge eyebrows, and men hugging in front of a sunset. She learned chakra control from Yuna, which were difficult for both her and Naruto due to their huge reserves, and even learned she had a strong wind affinity and a minor fire affinity from Toga. Her Jinjutsu wasn't that great as she could break them but not cast them. She found that she had great skills in sealing and had already become a level 9 seal master. Thanks to Naruto and her dream training with Inayasha her Kinjutsu was off the charts, she had even managed to master Tasega's red form, diamond form, and flaming form, she still couldn't use the dragon scale form or the black form. Naruto now stood at 5'9 with a lean but strong build and his hair reaching the back of his knees. As far as clothes went he dressed just like Sesameru, but as his pants were black, his kimono was dark blue with black cuffs and both of his shoulders had a spiked pauldron. Naruto's personality had changed some over the years as he became more like Sesameru, he still smiled and showed a softer side to those he knew and liked, but to anyone else he was impassive and cold. As far as training went Naruto had mastered all of his swords and all of Sesameru's powers, though he hasn't been able to transform into the giant demon dog form yet. He found he had an affinity for lightning and water, though he didn't have many jutsu for them since he preferred to use his swords, but what jutsu he did have were powerful. Naruto and Shiro had even mastered most of the Inuzuka clan techniques while also making some of their own. Outside of training life hadn't changed much, but what did change was a big deal. Naruto and Mido had made a few friends at the academy, and Mido had even introduced Naruto the Ichiraku Raymond stand and the family that worked there, they had apparently treated Mido fairly before she met Naruto. Naruto had also gained a little sister named Toka, she's currently 8 years old and has two partners named Jin and Ren. Though with all the good changes that happened some weren't so good. Due to Mido developing early most of the civilians that hated her thought it would be a good idea to defile her, they never got the chance as Naruto was always there to kick ass. It wasn't just the civilians though, Mido had also caught the attention of Sasuke Chiha and Kiba in Yuzuka. Mido didn't have any interest in them since Kiba was just a pervert that wanted her for her body and Sasuke saw her skill level was better than the other girls in class so he just wanted her to give him strong children. Naruto had problems with fangirls, for some reason as he became colder to people he didn't know more girls seemed to flock to him, Mido did not like that. Naruto was able to get rid of most of them by simply talking to them, the rest though only became even more interested in him. You've gotten better Mido-chan. In fact I'd say my dad was right all those years ago, you are a challenge for this Sesameru. Said Naruto with a small smile. Of course I am, I was trained by the best, you know. Said Mido with a smirk. Besides it'll cement my title as strongest hokage ever if I can match a Sesameru, you know. Said Mido before she felt a blade at her throat. Looking to the side she saw Naruto standing there with Takajin at her neck. I said that you were a challenge not that you could match me, you have a long way to go before you can match this Sesameru said Naruto with a smirk before he removed his blade from her neck and then kissed her cheek. Mido blushed a little at this but smiled all the same. She and Naruto had started dating when they turned 14 and she was happy to say that they had a very solid relationship, though Yuna and Toga did warn her that because of the alpha aura that Naruto naturally gave off that he would attract more girls to his side. Naruto knowing of this as well assured her that he would be completely faithful to her and her only as he planned to make her his mate once they became genin. Mido was extremely happy to hear this because thanks to living with the Inuzuka for so long, she knew that he meant he planned on marrying her. At first she thought that they were too young to be doing something like that, but then Yuna and Toga explained that being a ninja basically made you an adult, no matter where you were in the world, plus thanks to the dangerous life of a ninja, there was no guarantee that she would live long enough to wait for an older age. This convinced her that if they were both happy and willing then there was no reason why they shouldn't marry. Throughout their relationship though she did notice that like her future in-laws said more and more girls started hitting on Naruto while he denied their advances. Some of the girls she noticed though were actually nice girls that just wanted someone nice to love them and treat them well rather than the perverts and scumbags that mostly walked around Konoha. 
Because of this she told Naruto that he could in fact date other girls, but no fangirls, she refused to share her man with a fangirl. Naruto agreed with her because fangirls were just scary, plus there were a few girls he had gained a crush on, but simply left those feelings alone so that he could be faithful to Mido. That just means I need to keep training, and then once I'm Hokage I'll assign you as my personal bodyguard, you know. Said Mido. Anyway, are going to ask Sum and Hana today. Asked Mido. Yes I am, in fact I'll do it before we head to the academy. Said Naruto. With that Naruto and Mido walked off to the side where a large white wolf and a large grey dog were waiting for them. The wolf was of course Shiro, she had grown a great deal over the years, as when she stands at her full height her head is at Naruto's chest. She had also learned to speak, making her one of the only three canines in the Inuzuka clan that was able to do so. The dog is actually Mido's partner and was named Kasumi. Kasumi used to be one of the most stubborn dogs that the clan had, as she would only listen to Tsum and Naruto, but once she met Mido, she took an instant liking to her. Because of this Tsum allowed Mido to keep Kasumi and learn some Inuzuka techniques. Kasumi was also the last of the three canes that could speak. Are you ready to leave master? Asked Shiro. Just about Shiro-chan, I just need to wash up a bit and then we'll go. Said Naruto. Mistress you should know that Kiba-san and Akamaru-kun came by earlier looking for you. Said Kasumi. Damn did I wish Kiba would leave me alone, I still don't know why you decided to mate with Akamaru, well knowing that doing so would force me to deal with Kiba. Said Mido. Sorry mistress but Akamaru-kun is a strong male, his master may be an idiot, but he's not, plus he knows who is the alpha in our relationship. Said Kasumi and it was true, anything Kasumi told Akamaru to do was done as soon as possible. A few minutes later we find Naruto and Mido in front of Tsum's house with Naruto knocking on the door. It was soon opened by Tsum who was wearing a simply black t-shirt and black pants, showing that she was off today. Naruto-kun, Mido-chan, what are you two doing here? If you're looking for Kiba he already left for the academy said Tsum. Tsum, you know damn well that we would not come here to be looking for Kiba. Said Naruto with a deadpan. Tsum gave a hard laugh at that as she knew that was true. Her son was a beta at best, but tried so hard to be an alpha, he constantly tried to one-up Naruto, insulted Naruto, and tried to charm Mido. She's tried to tell him that Naruto was an alpha among alpha, an apex predator, but he wouldn't listen, so she decided to let life knock him down a few pegs, at least Akamaru was level-headed enough to know Naruto was out of their league. Ahahaha, to tour. But seriously why are you here? Asked Tsum. I've come here to date Tsum to stake my claim on you and Hana, I wish for the both of you to be my mates. Said Naruto with a straight face. Tsum was surprised at this but didn't show it, she started at Naruto for a few moments before speaking. You do know that the last mate I had ran away because I was too much for him to handle, just because you're a Sesameru doesn't mean you have the strength needed to tame me. Said Tsum. Your last mate was a weak fool, he was a beta that obviously thought that if he made it with an alpha, that he would become one as well. Like you said he couldn't handle you and ran away like a bitch with his tail between his legs. I am nothing like him, and I assure I have more than enough strength to tame you, it's not can I tame you. Naruto suddenly pushed Tsum up against the wall. Dot. It's once I tame you, will you be able to keep up? Said Naruto as he crashed his lips against Tsum in a fierce and passionate kiss. Tsum was shocked at Naruto's forwardness, but couldn't help but moan as he shoved his tongue into her mouth. She tried to fight back, but his tongue quickly dominated her own, she moaned even louder when she felt him squeeze her ass and give it a hard smack. Tsum was really turned on at this point, her former mate had never dominated her like this, ever, she had always been the one doing the dominating. She started to rub her thighs together as she felt herself getting wet. Once they finally broke the kiss Tsum took a minute to regain her breath before speaking. We'll mate once you become Chunin, I expect you to have multiple mates, but I'm the alpha. Said Tsum. She may have agreed to be his mate, but she was no one submissive, so if she was doing this she was going to be the alpha of his women. Very well, where is Hana so I can tell her the same? Asked Naruto. He agreed to this so easily because he had already explained what it meant and the responsibilities that came with being the alpha of his harem to Mido, she did not care to be his alpha because managing all the women he would later be with would similar to what she would have to do as Hokage. She did not want to manage all the ninja under her care and then come home and pretty much do the same thing in her personal life. Tsum nodded her head to side and Naruto looked to find Hana sitting on the couch with a bright red face from what she had heard and saw. I agree to be your maid as well Naruto. Said Hana. Hana was a beautiful young woman with fair skin, big black eyes, long brown hair kept in a ponytail with two locks of hair framing her face, the red Inuzuka fang markings on her cheeks, an athletic but feminine build, large D-cup breasts, and long legs. For clothes she wore a grey t-shirt and black pants, showing that it was her day off as well. 
Anna had actually grown a crush on Naruto since over the years they've spent quite a bit of time together whenever he would come and help her take care of the clan dogs. He also just had this aura about him that it had drawn to him. Her mother always said it was Naruto's alpha era and it was showing her that he was the best mate for her. Anna couldn't deny that because she had seen how he could be fierce and strong when in battle, thanks to watching him train, but thanks to him helping her she had seen that he could also be gentle and sweet, the perfect mate for her in her book. Naruto released Soon from his hold and walked over to Hana before giving her a kiss so passionate that her toes actually curled and she moaned loudly when he squeezed one of her breasts. I'll be claiming you and your mother the moment I make Chunin so be ready for it. Sorry Mito, but it seems you'll have to wait to be my mate. Naruto said to Hana after breaking the kiss, then turning to Mito to say the last part. Damn it, fine I'll wait, but just for that I'm making you wait before you can get a piece of this ass, you know. Said Mito as she slapped her ass and made it jiggle. Ahahaha, you don't have to wait at all Mito-chan. Well most of the time it's who you mate with first that's the alpha, it's more along the lines of where your mate mark is that determines who the alpha is. Since I'm going to be the alpha when Naruto mates with me, he'll put his mark on my neck while yours, Hana's, and anyone else he mates with will be on their shoulder. Said Tsum. Alright no waiting. Anyway we'll see you later Tsum, we don't want to be late for graduation. Said Mito as she disappeared in a burst of speed with Naruto giving both Hana and Tsum one last kiss before doing the same. At the academy. Naruto and Mito were sitting in their regular seats at the top of the class, with their partners at their sides waiting for class to start. While waiting they at least had some entertainment as they watched the Sasu fan club fight with the Naruto fan club. Naruto couldn't help but shake his head at them, the noise they were making was starting to hurt his ears. Just then two girls came running into the room. Ah, I win Eno Pig that means I get to sit next to Sasu kun Screamed Sakura Hurano, the president of the Sasu fan club. I don't care if you sit next to Sasuke forehead, I wasn't even racing here because of you, I was trying to get here before all the seats next to Naruto kun were taken said Ino Yamanaka, president of the Naruto fan club and a friend of both Naruto and Mito. Ino and Sakura used to be best friends before they both gained a crush on Sasuke and broke their friendship. Ino would later try to regain her friendship with Sakura when she developed feelings for Naruto, but so far it hasn't worked. Even though Ino was the president of Naruto's fan club, she wasn't a total fangirl as Naruto had convinced her to train and stop dieting, normally she wouldn't have listened if someone told her that, but because it was Naruto she listened. She was happy she did as she had a body that rivaled Mito's with only her breasts being smaller at a D cup, but her ass was bigger. Yeah right pig you're not fooling me. The only reason you even talk to Naruto Baka is to make Sasu kun jealous and get me to let my guard down so that you can swoop in and steal him away. It won't work pig, I'll never let you have Sasu kun Said Sakura. Whatever forehead. Said Ino as she walked up to where Naruto and Mito were. Hey Naruto kun, Mito chan, you guys ready for today? Asked Ino as she sat next to Naruto. We sure are Ino, we've been training for this day for years. Oh also I need to talk to you really quick. Said Mito as she pulled Ino to the side. Naruto could tell what Mito was talking to Ino about because Ino quickly start to sport a bright blush on her face as she took glances at him. When they came back over Ino leaned over and whispered in his ear. Is it true? Asked Ino. Yes. Said Naruto. I want in. Said Ino. Are you sure most women wouldn't like having to share their man with other women? Asked Naruto as he wanted her to sure with her choice and not regret it later. I'm sure. Said Ino. Very well then, I'll take you on a date the next time I have the chance. Said Naruto. Oh yeah. Screamed Ino as she stood up on her desk with her arms raised in the air. This caused everyone to look at her strangely which she noticed and quickly sat back down, the large smile she had never left her face though. Sorry don't mind me everyone. Said Ino. Naruto chuckled at this as they went back to waiting for class to start. Soon the rest of the class and their friends came in, Mito quickly went up to their friend Hinata and started to talk to her. Hinata was the only girl in their class that matched Mito's beauty, in fact their fanboys usually fought over who was more beautiful. Hinata's fans claimed that because Hinata was the Hyuga princess and her breasts were slightly larger than Mito's that she was more beautiful. Mito's fans claimed that because Mito showed off her killer body more and hand exotic hair that she was more beautiful. Hinata used to be an extremely shy wallflower before she became friends with Naruto and Mito. Both of them had greatly boosted her self-confidence, though she still had her moments of shyness. While most believed that they were just good friends, Hinata actually had a huge crush on Naruto, while she and Mito could be considered sisters, she never told Naruto or Mito about her feelings, because she knew her clan wouldn't approve of her liking someone they considered being from a lower clan like Naruto. Naruto and Mito noticed her feelings though, but Naruto was patient enough to wait for her to tell him on her own time, Mito on the other hand, was not that patient as it would seem. 
As Mido continued to talk to Hinata Naruto noticed that she started to become red until it was so red that a tomato would be jealous. Once they were done done Hinata walked over to him, but before she could say anything Naruto told her the same thing he told Ino. Somehow Hinata turned even redder and then quickly went to her seat before she passed out. It only took a few more minutes before their teachers Aruka and Mizuki came in and finally started the test. First was a written test, Naruto and Mido noticed that their test paper had a Jinjutsu on it and quickly broke it before completing the test. They weren't surprised by the Jinjutsu since they knew that their sensei Mizuki hated Mido and he also hated Naruto for hanging around Mido. After the test they were taken outside for the shuriken and kunai test, it was another simple test for Mido and Naruto since they both got perfect scores with the clan heirs getting above average and the civilians getting average and below. Next came the Tajutsu test, Mido ended up fighting some civilian girl and easily beat her since she was an Achiha fangirl. When Naruto's turn came he was up against Sasuke. Naruto couldn't help but sigh at this as he knew Sasuke would try to use this as a way to impress Mido. Naruto stood in the ring across from Sasuke with Shiro at his side, both Naruto and Shiro looked at Sasuke with an uninterested expression on their faces. Naruto this is a Tajutsu only spar meaning you can't have Shiro with you and get rid of your swords as well said Mizuki knowing full well that what he said was bullshit. Actually for the Inuzuka clan our partners are considered part of our Tajutsu style and therefore I am able to have her with me, but I shall compile anyway as it is not like she should waste her time with this. Said Naruto as he sealed away his swords. But master this Achiha isn't worthy of your time, please allow me to teach him his place. Said Shiro. As correct as you are Shiro, he is also unworthy of your time as well, besides I always figured I would have to show Sasuke the difference between us sooner or later. Said Naruto. Very well master. Said Shiro as she went to stand near Mido and Kasumi. You might as well give up Dode, you're no match for an Achiha elite. Especially since I know members of your clan are half as strong without your partners. Said Sasuke with a cocky smirk. You are mistaken Achiha as you are no elite, and even without Shiro, you are no match for this Esimaru. Said Naruto. Behind Naruto and Sasuke their respective fan clubs were arguing about who was going to win. Ready. Begin. Said Mizuki. At the signal Sasuke charged in and launched a fierce Tajutsu barrage, Naruto simply dodged every attack by slightly leaning. When Sasuke jumped back Naruto still looked bored and disappointed with the situation. Is that all you have Sasuke, I haven't even moved from my spot. Said Naruto. Sasuke saw that Naruto was telling the truth, he had not moved from his spot. Fueled by his rage Sasuke charged in again only for his fist to be caught by Naruto, in his shock Sasuke didn't notice Naruto's free hand come up and hit him in the chest and launch him out of the ring. I hope that now you see the difference in our strength, do not challenge me again for you are not ready to face this Esimaru. Said Naruto as he turned and walked away all the while his fan club were cheering. Naruto-kun here is your prize for winning. Cried a random fangirl. Naruto turned to her but was suddenly hit in the face by something damp, taking the object off his face Naruto found that it was a pair of pink panties with the crotch being wet. You can keep those Naruto-kun. Said the same girl. Um. Thanks. Said Naruto not sure how to react to the situation. Before he could do anything more panties came flying at him, all of them damp. Mido quickly ran over and took all of the panties from him and throwing them back to the fangirls. Stupid fangirls, throwing panties at my man. If he keeps anyone's panties it'll be mine, you know. Mido thought to herself, unknown to her was that Ino and Hinata were thinking the same thing. The Tajutsu test continued until they were taken inside in order to finish the exam with an Injutsu test. Mido and Naruto passed that too, they would have had trouble with the clone jutsu thanks to their large chakra reserves, but thanks to the years of chakra control practice and training, allowed them to use elemental clones to replace the regular ones. Mizuki tried to say they had to use regular clones, but Aruka said that there was no rule against more advanced clones. Mido decided to wear her headband around her neck like she did with her goggles, while Naruto wore his around his waist like a belt. Iruka congratulated everyone on passing and then told them that they would be assigned teams the next day. In the Hokage office. Pirazin, the clan heads, and a group of jonin were all gathered around the Hokage's crystal ball as they had just finished watching the graduation exam. So what do you all think of this batch of genin? Asked Hirazin. Most of the civilians won't make it past the true genin test. Said Asuma Suratobi, the Hokage's son, while smoking a cigarette. Asuma was a rather tall man with brown skin, brown eyes, black hair, and a shaggy beard. He wore the standard Kanohe Jonin uniform with his headband tied around his forehead. That's a given, look at how many fanboys and fangirls there are. Said Kurinai in disgust. Kurinai was a beautiful woman with fair untamed black hair, exotic red eyes, an amazing figure, and D-cup breasts. 
She wore a white dress that looked like it was made of bandages with one long red sleeve and a rose thorn-like design, bandages wrapped around her hands, forearms and thighs, and blue shinobi sandals with her headband on her forehead. Kurinai hates fangirls, and she especially didn't like how they threw their panties at that Inuzuka boy. I'd say that the Yuzumaki and the Naruto boy were the most interesting, they seemed almost bored throughout the entire exam. Said Kakashi. Kakashi was a tall man with fair skin, a black eye, and gravity-defying gray hair. He wore the standard Jonin uniform with a blue mask covering the lower half of his face, and his headband was worn slanted so that it covered his left eye. He currently had his face in an orange book that had all the women in the room glaring at him. Well of course, this was much too easy for those two. Said Tsum with a wild grin on her face. And why is that Tsum-san? Asked Hiruzen. I've watched those two train from time to time, and I have to say that I'm impressed with their work ethic. They train each other into the ground, rest, eat, and then train some more, they're always pushing each other to be better. Hell from what I hear from other clan members that spar with them is that they are really tough opponents, hell because of those two, my clan is training twice as hard just so they aren't left in the dust. Said Tsum with her grin growing. They continued to talk for a while before the Hokage dismissed them, though he did keep Tsum back in order to talk to her. You're walking a fine line Tsum. Said Hiruzen with a serious face. I don't know what you mean Hokage-sama. Said Tsum with an equally serious face. You know it is illegal for any one clan to adopt Mido. Said Hiruzen. And I haven't adopted her into the clan. Sure she stays over quite often and trains with us, but she's not a part of the clan. Said Tsum. She sleeps over pretty much every night, I don't remember the last time I've seen her at her apartment. Said Hiruzen. She likes to have sleepovers with Naruto, and they're definitely not having them at Mido's place in the red light district, I've been to Mido's apartment, and I wouldn't allow an old diseased dog to die there, let alone allow two kids to sleep there. Said Tsum. What about her Ninkin and the fact that I know she knows Inuzuka clan techniques? Said Hiruzen. It is clan law that whoever a dog bonds to owns the dog, Kasumi bonded with Mido, so Mido owns her. As for the clan techniques, it's like you said they are clan techniques, and as clan head I can decide if an outsider can learn those techniques. After seeing how good Mido was with Kasumi I allowed her to learn. Said Tsum. And what does the rest of your clan think of this? Asked Hiruzen. No offense Hokage-sama, but unlike you and the other clans in the village the Inuzuka doesn't have a council, everything is run and decided upon by the clan head. Once I decided that she could learn if she wanted to my clan followed my word. Besides they love Mido, sure the presence of the fox inside of her intimidated some of them at first, but now it's like she was always there, Helichiraku's Raymond has become the number one place an Inuzuka will go to in order to eat out. Said Tsum. And if I were to forbid Mido from ever stepping into the Inuzuka compound? Asked Hiruzen. It's against the law for you to do that. You cannot interfere with clan affairs, and who is and isn't allowed in a clan's compound falls under clan affairs. I don't understand what the problem here is Hokage-sama, there is no law against a clan helping someone outside of it. Said Tsum. The problem is that as she grows she'll favorite your clan over the others, thus indirectly giving your clan more power, as the Jinchuriki Mido needs to be loyal to the village above all else not to a single clan. Said Hiruzen. It's not like I'm stopping the other clans from helping her as well, you and everyone else needs to remember that she not just a Jinchuriki but a human being. If no one helps her then she'll grow to distrust everyone in the village and be loyal to no one. But if loyalty is your biggest concern then you should know that the Inuzuka clan is the best place for that, no one is as loyal as an Inuzuka. That being said we're also not afraid to tell those we're loyal to when they're taking advantage of that loyalty. Right now Hokage-sama you are taking advantage of that loyalty, Mido trusts you, but if you try to take her away from the only clan that has been willing to actively help her, then you'll lose that trust. Said Tsum before she got up and left, not bothering to wait for the Hokage to dismiss her. Damn that this is bad. Hiruzen said to himself. He had no idea how bad it really was. Not too far away. Sitting on top of a building Naruto was using his heightened sense of hearing to listen in on the conversation between Tsum and Hiruzen, and was telling Mido everything that was said, he did not leave anything out. Mido looked pissed beyond belief, she had been mad at the Hokage for all the lies he had told her, but she was slowly starting to come around and was even on the way to go see him when Naruto caught the conversation going on. Now though he had completely lost her trust and she planned to favorite the fuck out of the Inuzuka clan, now just to spite him. Mido then felt arms wrap around her from behind and felt Naruto kiss her cheek. Naruto didn't say anything as he knew there was nothing he could say, Mido had just found out that a man she saw as a grandfather cared more about who she was loyal to rather than if she was happy. Take me home Naru-kun. Mido said softly. Sure thing Mido-chan. Said Naruto as they both started to walk towards the Inuzuka compound. Naruto was currently training with Mido in Kinjutsu deep in a forest. 
He had taken her home after he had explained the conversation he overheard with Ahokage and Soom, but she was just so mad and she couldn't calm down. Knowing how destructive Mito could get when she was angry he took her to this forest in order to work out her frustrations, they left Shiro and Kitsumi at the compound in order to tell Naruto's parents where they were. It was working as he could see that she was slowly but surely starting to calm down. Naruto then blocked a horizontal strike from Mito, and the shockwave produced from their blades meeting actually caused some of the trees around them to fall. Your speed and strength have increased further since our last spar, that is incredible Mito. Said Naruto with a small smile. Mito returned the small smile, but Naruto could still see the traces of rage in her eyes. They were about to continue training until their enhanced hearing picked up someone coming towards them. They sheathed their swords and waited for the person only to see Mizuki with a large scroll on his back, along with two giant shuriken. Mizuki-sensei, what are you doing out here? Asked Mito. Oh nothing just some training. Said Mizuki. Naruto and Mito narrowed their eyes at this as they picked up Mizuki's irregular heartbeat when he said that, meaning he was lying. Is that so? Asked Naruto as his hand rested on the hilt of Takajin. Then what is the scroll on your back? Asked Naruto. Oh this. It's all of the jutsus that I've thought up and was going to practice. Said Mizuki. Before Naruto or Mito could say anything their sensei Aruka showed up. Mizuki, why did you steal the forbidden scroll of seals? Asked Aruka while having a kunai drawn. So that's why you're out here, you're trying to run off with all of the village's strongest and most dangerous jutsus. Accused Mito with her hand ready to draw to Sega. Damn it Aruka, you just couldn't stay out of this could you? No matter once I get this scroll to Orochimaru-sama he'll give the power to be unstoppable. Said Mizuki. So you betrayed the village for its greatest traitor and was planning on giving him the forbidden scroll of seals, your actions warrant death. You shall be delivered to the Shinigami by this Asimaru. Said Naruto as he drew Takajin. Mizuki actually paled at this as he spied on Naruto's sword training once and saw just how deadly Naruto was with a sword. He knew that the only way he was going to get out of this alive if he used Mito against Naruto. Wait you don't want me dead, I have valuable information for Mito. Said Mizuki. Naruto was about to kill Mizuki anyway until he felt Mito grab his arm. Looking at her the two had a silent conversation for a moment before Naruto put his sword away. What information do you have? Asked Mito. Mito, you can't be said Aruka before he was cut off. Shut up, my whole life people have been lying to me, so if he has information that can help me figure out why then I want to hear it. Said Mito. This was complete bullshit as she could already tell that Mizuki was about to say something about the Kaiubi. This was the perfect opportunity to say she learned about the Kaiubi being sealed in her from Mizuki, instead of someone else telling her. Yeah Aruka shut up and let me talk, anyway the information I have is about why everyone in the village hates you so much. You see 16 years ago the Kaiubi attacked the village and killed a lot of people, all of the younger generation were told that the fourth Hokage killed it, but that was a lie. The truth is you can't kill a tailed beast, so the fourth did the next best thing and sealed it into a weakened state, you, Yumito are the nine-tailed fox. Said Mizuki expecting this information caused Mito to break down which would cause Naruto to comfort her, and with those two out of the way, he was sure he could get past Aruka without a problem. I'm. The Kaiubi. Said Mito slowly. She couldn't believe how stupid Mizuki was, if she really was the Kaiubi did he really think she would take all the abuse the village had been giving her. Yes you are, in fact the village is starting to hate Naruto as well because he seems so intent to protect you. Said Mizuki. I see, oh well I'll just have to let stupid people be stupid, goodbye Mizuki. Wine scar. Said Mito before quickly drawing and swinging her sword to fire off one of its most dangerous attacks. The attack hit Mizuki directly in the chest and launched him into a tree with a large cut on his chest, while the attack should have killed him, Mito held back on the attack so that he could live and go through interrogation. After checking to make sure Mizuki was still alive, Iruka turned to Mito and Naruto. Mito. You know that what he said wasn't true right, you are not the Kaiubi. Said Iruka. I know that Iruka sensei, I never believed I was the Kaiubi. Said Mito. It was then that Samanbu showed up in order to arrest Mizuki and collect the forbidden scroll of seals, though they did decide to take Mito, Naruto, and Iruka to go see the Hokage and explain what happened. Hokage Tower. Hiruzen stared at Naruto and Mito after he was told everything that happened, he had already dismissed Aruka as he wanted to talk to the two alone. He really didn't know what to do in this situation, as Mito wasn't supposed to know of her burden just yet, as he didn't believe she was mature enough to handle the information. Were you ever going to tell me? Asked Mito. Yes, I was going to tell you when I felt you were mature enough to know. Said Hiruzen. In other words there was a chance you would never tell me. Said Mito. That's not true Mito. Said Hiruzen. 
Okudsama, I am well aware of my personality. I am a very cheerful and playful person with a bad temper, and it is because of this that people that don't know me often believe that they can't take me seriously. There is a good chance that you wouldn't see me as mature until much later in my life, at which point you would most likely be dead. Said Mido. Pirazin winced a little at this as Mido had never called him Hokujama before. Regardless of that Mido, I didn't tell you and ordered others not to tell you for a very good reason. Said Hirazin. What reason could that be? Asked Mido. I wanted you to live as normal a life as possible. Said Hirazin. No offense Hokujama, but the moment you revealed that Mido was a jinchuriki to a bunch of emotional people who lost loved ones her chance at a normal life was taken away. Said Naruto. I was following my successor's wish for Mido to be seen as a hero. Said Hirazin. There are such things as unsung heroes Hokujama, there was no need to to reveal Mido's status to everyone, especially when they were at their most volatile. Said Naruto. Hirazin narrowed his eyes at this, he never really liked the fact that Naruto, even when he was younger, was always so calm and stoic, as it reminded him too much of Orochimaru. Sure he has seen Naruto smile a bit when he was with Mido, his close friends, or his family. Then there was the three swords he used that Hirazin had absolutely no information on, but all of them seemed powerful. I will not be lectured on how to run my village Naruto. Said Hirazin with steel in his voice. Naruto didn't even flinch, Sesamaru's hardened voice could make you feel like the Shinigami was breathing down your neck, and Naruto had been on the end of that voice for years before he mastered Sesamaru's power, and he left Naruto on his own. Saying that Naruto was ready to be his own Sesamaru. I wasn't trying to lecture you Hokage-sama, just inform you that the decision you made was rash. Said Naruto. One of the Anbu in the office couldn't take any more of what he believed to be Naruto's insults, and charged at Naruto with his sword drawn. In just the blink of an eye the Anbu found his sword cut in half with the tip of Naruto's sword at his neck. Hirazin, the bear-masked Anbu, and the rest of the hidden Anbu were shocked at this, but Mido simply smirked, she expected nothing less of her boyfriend. Foolish, you are not ready to face this Sesamaru. Said Naruto. What Naruto didn't know was that he had unintentionally impressed a cat-masked Anbu with his display of skill. Calm down Naru-kun. Sorry about him Hokage-sama, Naru-kun has a bit of a temper. Said Mido. Hirazin had to look at Mido like she was crazy, he barely saw any emotion out of Naruto at all, and yet here she is saying he had a temper. If this was Naruto having a temper he didn't want to see him lose his temper. It's fine Mido, my Anbu did attack without my permission, and he will be punished for that. You two should go home now though as you have team placements tomorrow. Said Hirazin. Mido and Naruto nodded before leaving the office. Cat, bring me Kakashi and tell him that if he's not here in 10 minutes, I'll have him chasing Tora until his hair falls out. Said Hirazin. Pat shivered at this before quickly leaving to do her job. The next day. Naruto and Mido were sitting together in the academy classroom, Aruka had already assigned teams. Naruto and Mido had been placed on a team with Sasuke and Sakura, this made Naruto suspicious, as there had only been a rare few occasions where more than three genin were placed on a team together. It had already been three hours since everyone else's sensei had come and picked them up, but they were still waiting on their sensei, Kakashi Haddock. They had all taken to doing something different while waiting for their sensei, Sasuke was brooding as always, Sakura was frowning over him like he was Kami's gift to the world, Kasumi and Shiro were taking a nap, and Mido was sitting in Naruto's lap with his arms around her waist. Moments later Kakashi finally opened the door and looked at his team. My first impression is. I hate you all, meet me on the roof in five minutes. Said Kakashi before he disappeared in a puff of smoke. Naruto and Mido woke up their dogs before heading up to the roof with Sasuke and Sakura following. Once they reached the roof they found Kakashi leaning against the railing reading his book. Well now that you're all here let's get to know each other with some introductions. Said Kakashi. Why don't you start off sensei, show us how it's done. Asked Sakura. Alright, my name is Kakashi Haddock, my likes. Dislikes. My hobbies are too adult for you, and as for my dreams well I haven't really thought about it. Said Kakashi. All we learned was his name. Thought Sasuke and Sakura. I wonder what the Hokage is planning with this team. Naruto thought to himself while scratching Shiro behind her ear, which she loved. Why can't this just be over with, me and Naruto have things to do when we get home. Mido thought to herself. Now why don't you go next Pinky? Said Kakashi. Sakura glared at him a bit for the nickname but started anyway. My name is Sakura Haruno, my likes are, looks at Sasuke with a blush, I mean who I like is, looks at Sasuke again with a deeper blush, my dislikes are Ino Pig, Mido Baka, and Naruto Baka, my hobbies are reading and, looks at Sasuke and giggles perversely, my dream for the future is to marry the boy I love. Said Sakura. Oh great I have a fangirl. Thought Kakashi. Well it looks like this will be a 3 gen in cell after all. Thought Naruto and Mido as they believed that Sakura wouldn't do anything in the team. You're up princess. Said Kakashi. 
Sasuke glared before he started. My name is Sasuke Chia. I don't really like anything, and I have a lot of dislikes, I don't have any hobbies other than training, and I don't have a dream, but what I do have is an ambition, I'm going to kill a certain someone, and then restore the Achiha clan. Said Sasuke. Um, I'll have to do something about that Avenger attitude of his. Thought Kakashi. Sasuke-kun is so cool. Sakura cheered in her head. Foolish Achiha. Thought Naruto. How is he going to restore his clan if he turns down every girl that is interested in him? Nito asked herself in thought. Your next moon child. Said Kakashi. Naruto's eyebrow twitched a bit at that, he liked his birthmark. My name is Naruto and Yuzuka, my likes are Mido, Shiro, Kasumi, my family, my friends, my swords, T, and Raymond. My dislikes include rapists, traitors, dog abusers, and anyone who talks bad about Mido. My hobbies include training, meditating, taking care of Shiro, playing with my little sister, and being with Mido. My dream for the future is to take the Inuzuka clan to new heights. Said Naruto. And finally we have Whiskers. Said Kakashi. Mido wanted to punch Kakashi in the face for that name. My name is Mido Yuzumaki, my likes are Naruto, Kasumi, Shio, the Inuzuka clan, and Raymond. My dislikes are rapists, traitors, dog abusers, anyone that can't tell the difference between a kunai and a scroll it's sealed in, and anyone who mistreats Naruto just for dating me. My hobbies include training, taking care of Kasumi, and hanging out with my friends. My dream for the future is to become Hokage and to have a large family. Said Mido. All right now with introductions out of the way it's my duty to inform you that you're not officially genin yet. Said Kakashi. What? Asked Sasuke and Sakura in shock while Naruto and Mido weren't surprised since Yuna had told them about this last night. Mido was pissed as it meant she couldn't have naughty time with Naruto. That's right, your true genin test won't be until tomorrow, so be at training ground 7 at 7 a.m. Oh, and don't eat breakfast, or you'll just throw up. Said Kakashi before he disappeared in a puff of smoke. You should ignore what he said and come at 10 after eating breakfast. Said Naruto as he and Mido stood up. HN, like I'd listen to you. Said Sasuke. Yeah, Naruto Baka, Sasuke kun doesn't need your stupid advice. You just want him to fail in order to make yourself look better. Said Sakura. Foolish. Said Naruto before he and Mido, along with their dogs, left in order to train for tomorrow. The next day. Naruto, Mido, Shiro, and Kasumi arrived at training ground 7 at 10 a.m. after eating breakfast, and they found Sasuke and Sakura looking miserable. It was clear to Mido and Naruto that they didn't do anything that Naruto told them yesterday. You're both late yelled Sakura. Bakashi sensei isn't here yet so we're not late, you're just really early, you know. Said Mido. Moments later Kakashi appeared in a swirl of leaves. Good morning everyone. Said Kakashi with an eye smile. You're late. Screamed Sakura. Sorry, I got lost on the road of life. Anyway let's get started shall we, your test is to get these bells from me before this timer goes off. Anyone that doesn't have a bell by the time the timer goes off fails and will be sent back to the academy said Kakashi as he pulled out three bells and a timer. But sensei, there are only three bells and there are four of us. Said Sakura. Great observation skill Sakura, this means that no matter what one of you will be going back to the academy. Now I suggest you come at me with the intent to kill if you want to get a bell. Said Kakashi. But we could seriously hurt you sensei. Said Sakura in alarm. If that is how he wishes for it to be then so be it. Said Naruto with his hand resting on Bakusega rather than Takajin and Shiro bearing her fangs and getting into a pouncing position. Mido's body tensed up as she was prepared to act, while Kasumi took the same stance as Shiro. I'm glad you're worried about me Sakura, but Naruto is right, this is what I want, now your test begins. Now. Said Kakashi and the four disappeared. For two minutes Kakashi stood in the middle of the training field, waiting for one of his potential students to attack him. Hmm, they've hidden themselves well. Kakashi thought to himself. It was then that Naruto and Shiro came out of the forest in front of him, while Mido and Kasumi came out of the forest behind him. Everything was quiet as Kakashi's two students and their dogs looked at him like he was a cornered rabbit, and they were hungry wolves, to be honest it made him a bit uncomfortable. Then in a split second both groups came charging at him at high speed, Kakashi managed to block a punch from Naruto and a kick from Mido, but he felt a great deal of force behind the attacks. Before he could counter-attack Kakashi had to quickly jump back in order to avoid the teeth of their dog partners, he didn't get a chance to breathe though as Naruto and Mido kept the pressure on. Now Kakashi was using Chakra to enforce his arms, as he blocked their attack, as the force behind their blows actually rattled his bones. Kakashi also noticed that even though they were fighting really close to each other, they weren't getting in the other's way. Suddenly Naruto and Mido jumped away from him. Kakashi was about to start his own attack when he suddenly remembered their dogs. Passing Fang. 
yelled Shiro and Kasumi as they became drills and flew at Kakashi. He managed to dodge them only to then be stabbed through the chest by Bakusega, Kakashi went up in smoke, showing a log was stabbed instead of him. Kakashi watched from the tree line in horror as the log that Naruto had pierced slowly began to decompose until nothing was left, he made a note to avoid that particular sword. Don't think you can hide Kakashi-sensei, wind scar. Yelled Mito as she swung to Sega, releasing the attack. Kakashi quickly used substitution once again in order to dodge the attack, and once he saw the amount of damage the attack did to the area it hit he was glad he did. It had completely destroyed a lot of trees and even the ground. What the hell kind of attack was that? Kakashi asked himself in thought. He then had to once again dodge Shiro and Kasumi who were using the passing fang technique. Shiro Kasumi to me. Said Naruto and Mito at the same time. Shiro and Kasumi stopped attacking Kakashi and went to stand next to their respective master. Now man beast clone. Said Naruto and Mito. Shiro and Kasumi went up in smoke, but when the smoke cleared there was no longer a wolf and a dog. Shiro looked like a female version of Naruto only with white hair done in a high ponytail and a more feminine version of Naruto's clothes, picture Sesameru's mother. Kasumi on the other looked just like Mito, with the only difference being that her hair was gray. Go. Said Naruto as the four of them took off and attacked Kakashi from all sides. Kakashi first dodged a punch and a kick from Shiro, before blocking a kick from Mito, followed by blocking a punch from Kasumi, but he was caught in the chest by a punch from Naruto. He jumped away from the four while holding his chest. Damn, their teamwork is almost flawless, it's clear that they train together almost religiously. Kakashi thought to himself. Thus give up Kakashi-san, you are no match for my master, let alone all four of us working together. Said Shiro. Shiro-san is right, give up now or you just might die. Said Kasumi. Instead of answering them Kakashi disappeared in a swirl of leaves. Hey, running away wasn't an option, you know. Said Mito. Naruto chuckled at Mito's antics. Did you all do your part? Asked Naruto. Mito, Shiro, and Kasumi each held up a bell with smirks on their faces. Good, what do you wish to do now Mito? Asked Naruto. Well well we could continue the test like we don't already have the bells, we would only be showing more of our skills, and I think he's seen enough for now. Let's just find a nice spot to sit in until the test is over. Said Mito. Naruto nodded to this, and they found a nice shady spot to sit and wait, while Shiro and Kasumi returned to their canine forms. They actually found a great spot to watch Sakura be put under a Jinjutsu and Sasuke be buried up to his neck, thanks to Kakashi's headhunter Jutsu. It wasn't long after that that the timer went off signaling the end of the test. Moments later Kakashi was standing in front of his students with Naruto, Mito, Shiro, and Kasumi looking relaxed, Sasuke was brooding again, and Sakura looked nervous. Well well you all tried your best you didn't manage to get the bells. Said Kakashi. I wouldn't be so sure about that, you know. Said Mito as she held up two bells and Naruto held up one. Sasuke and Sakura were both shocked at this, but not Kakashi, to him they were dangerous genin, and he wasn't surprised at all that they managed to somehow get the bells from him. I stand corrected, but now the question is what are you going to do with the bells? Asked Kakashi. At that point Mito threw her two bells to Sasuke and Sakura, while Naruto threw his bell to Mito. Hmm, care to explain your decisions? Asked Kakashi. Well they didn't do much Sakura and Sasuke have potential, and that potential will be wasted at the academy, Mito dreams of being Hokage, so I wish to help her any way I can, and whether I'm a ninja or not, this Sesamaru will do great things. Said Naruto earning a kiss to the cheek from Mito, and a glare from Sasuke due to getting the kiss, he smirked though as since Naruto gave up his bell he was off the team. Well in that case you all. Pass. This test wasn't really about getting the bells, but about teamwork, which Naruto and Mito showed in spades. Because of this you all pass but remember this, those who break the rules are trash, but those who abandon their friends and comrades are lower than trash. Congratulations you three for we are now officially team 7, be here tomorrow at 7am for training. Said Kakashi with an eye smile and a thumbs up. Sasuke smirked before frowning as realized this meant Naruto was still on the team, Sakura cheered, and Naruto and Mito smirked at each other, while petting their partner's heads. Here is inside as in his mind he went over everything Kakashi had told him about his team, he had already gotten the reports the other jonin, but he had Kakashi stay back for his own reasons. Kakashi's report greatly unnerved him as in his mind Mito and Naruto were much too strong as it was. This is not good Kakashi, well normally I'd be glad to have such strong ninja, but Mito's loyalty isn't solely to the village, and Naruto reminds me far too much of Orochimaru. Said Hiruzen. What do you want me to do Hokage-sama? Asked Kakashi. I want you focus on team building exercises when you have them all together and then focus on training Sasuke in private since we need to make sure he feels he's getting strong in order to keep him loyal to the village. 
then I want you to try and dig up as much information on Naruto's and Mito's swords as swords with those abilities don't just appear out of nowhere, take the swords from them if you have to. Also I want you to discreetly try to break Naruto's and Mito's relationship, I can only assume she became this strong due to her connection to the Inuzuka clan, so if we can break that connection then we can mold her into being loyal to the village. Said Hiruzen. Very well Hokage-sama but is all of this really necessary, I mean Mito still wants to become Hokage someday. Said Kakashi. That may be Kakashi, but with her current mindset, she won't be able to put aside her personal feelings and make the right decisions for the good of the village as a whole. Said Hiruzen. But Naruto and Mido. Naruto was practically being dragged through the village by Mido towards the Inuzuka compound, with Shiro and Kasumi following. Naruto was really annoyed with the fact that he was being dragged, but let it go as he could understand Mido's excitement, they were legal adults now, and could finally be legally mated. Still though, he was excited too, but you didn't see him dragging her anywhere. Come on Naruto-kun, we have to hurry to the compound, you know. Said Mido with a huge smile on her face. Naruto sighed at this, and before Mido knew what was going on she found herself being carried bridal style in Naruto's arms. Fine they'll get us to the compound, but I don't like being dragged. Said Naruto as he started walking and Mido snuggled into his chest. Though Naruto was walking Shiro and Kasumi were in full sprint just to keep up with him. It wasn't long before they made it to the Inuzuka clan compound and went straight to their house where they found Yuna, Toga, and their partners sitting in the living room. Hey pups, from the huge shit-eating smile on Mido's face, I'm guessing that you passed your test and are now fully ninja. Said Yuna. That's right now how does this whole mating thing with the Inuzuka work? Asked Mido causing Yuna and Toga to laugh. Well aren't you the eager little pup, Inuzuka mating is pretty straightforward as we don't really care for ceremony all that much. It's pretty much a regular wedding, except all you need is the clan head to officiate everything, hell you don't even need to wear nice clothes. Said Toga. So I don't have to fight Naruto-kun for dominance or anything like that? Asked Mido. No, that's only for if you're trying to mate with the clan head, which I hear Naruto will be doing later. Said Yuna while looking at Naruto at the last part. Naruto just nodded his head before sitting Mido down on her own feet. Well I would at least like to wear a nice dress on my big day, Naruto-kun you'll wear something nice too, and I'd like our partners to be freshly cleaned. Said Mido. Well we'll take care of getting Tsum-sama while you guys get ready for your big day. Said Yuna before she and Toga left to find Tsum. Are you sure you don't want to invite anyone to this Mido-chan? Asked Naruto. Well I would've liked to invite Hinata and Ino, it would only cause problems as Hinata's father wouldn't let her come, and if we were to invite Ino then Hinata would feel left out. Besides them Yuna, Toga, Toka, Hana, Tsum, and our partners are already going to be there. And you know why I don't want the Hokage to be there. Said Mido. Naruto simply nodded to this before turning away. Very well, I'll leave you to get yourself and Kasumi ready while I do the same for myself and Shiro. Said Naruto before leaving with Shiro following. Come on Kasumi let's go get cleaned up. Said Mido. Can I bring Akamaru-kun to the wedding? Asked Kasumi. No, if you bring Akamaru then he'll bring Kiba and I don't want Kiba at my wedding. Said Mido. But mistress what if I tell him not to inform Kiba about the wedding? Said Kasumi as she really wanted her mate to be at the wedding with her. Not if you can get him to swear not to tell Kiba then he can come. Said Mido. But Naruto in the bath. The Inuzuka clan had its own public bath, which is where Naruto and Shiro currently were, as it wasn't uncommon for Inuzuka clan members to bathe with their partners. Naruto was sitting behind Shiro while brushing her wet fur and using a special shampoo to make her coat really shine. How are you feeling about today master? Asked Shiro. Honestly I'm feeling excited but also a bit nervous. Said Naruto. Really? You have not been nervous that first date you had with Mido. Said Shiro. That is because my ancestor only gave me knowledge and the memories of his battle tactics, fighting style, and his abilities. He purposely left out any of his more personal memories so that I would make the same decisions as he would, that way I could truly be my own Sesameru. Because of this I had no romantic experience to speak of when I went on that first date. Said Naruto. Actually master I always wondered why you came to me with your nervousness rather than going to your parents. Said Shiro. I came to you because you're my partner and I trust you with my life, plus mom would have just embarrassed me and dad would have tried to tell me stories of his times with mom and I didn't want those images in my head. Said Naruto. I understand master and I thank you for the amount trust you have in me. Said Shiro. Of course Shiro-chan. Said Naruto. Shiro smiled as much as a wolf could when her master added the chan suffix to her name. In truth she had grown feelings for her dear master and wanted to mate with him, but had decided to allow Mido to mate with him first before she confessed her feelings to him, this decision however was torture for her when she went into heat. She hoped that he would accept her feelings that way her next heat cycle won't be so hard on her. 
with Mido. Mido and Kasumi were in the bath the house had since it was also big enough to share with her partner. Much like Naruto Mido was washing Kasumi since she had already finished washing herself. I'm sure you're very excited about today mistress. Said Kasumi. I am excited, but I'm also really nervous, you know. Said Mido. Why are you nervous? Asked Kasumi. Well Naruto-kun was my first actual friend, through him I got you as my partner, I got a nice place to live, he trained me to be strong, and he told me who my father is. Naruto-kun is just an amazing man, and I worry about being a good mate for him. Said Mido. Then you have nothing to worry about mistress, Naruto loves you and you're an amazing person, you'll do great as Naruto's mate. Said Kasumi. Thanks Kasumi-chan, you're the best. Hey did you tell Akamaru to take a bath before coming to the wedding? Asked Mido. Yes I told him, don't worry mistress everything is going to be fine. Said Kasumi. Later. Naruto stood in front of Tsum wearing a formal kimono that was dark blue with white flames on the cuffs and black paw prints on the back. To his right stood Mido wearing a formal kimono dress that was burnt orange with a black trim and white sakura petals designs along the sleeves and back. Standing off to the side were Yuna, Toga, Toka, and their partners, Toka couldn't stop bouncing from the excitement she was feeling at the fact that her big brother and her big sister figure were finally going to mate. Toka was a pretty little girl with fair skin, spiky brown hair, black eyes, and the Inuzuka clan red fang markings on her cheeks. Alright Naruto do you take Mido as your mate? Asked Sum. I do. Said Naruto with a small smile. And Mido do you take Naruto as your mate? Asked Sum. I do. Said Mido with tears building up in her eyes. And by my power as clan head of the Inuzuka clan, I now pronounce you mates, you may kiss. Said Tsum. Mido practically threw herself into Naruto's arms and kissed him fiercely, as Naruto wrapped his arms around her waist and pulled her tightly against him, the kiss lasted a good three minutes before broke apart. All right now add chakra to your teeth and bite her on her shoulder. Said Tsum. Doing as he was told Naruto added chakra to his teeth and bit Mido on her right shoulder soon a purple paw print with a yellow ring around it appeared on the back of her shoulder. Mido finally let the tears fall as the meaning of this moment fully hit her, she was truly part of a family now, she didn't have to worry about ever being alone again. After licking away the blood on her shoulder Naruto wiped her tears away and smiled at her while cupping her cheek. I love you Mido-chan. Said Naruto. I love you too Naruto-kun. Said Mido. As clan head of the Inuzuka clan I hereby welcome you to the pack Mido Yuzumaki Inuzuka. Said Tsum with a smirk. You're letting me keep my maiden name? Asked a surprised Mido. Of course, it's one of the few connections you have to your mother after all. Well other than your red highlights and the whole you know thing. Said Tsum. You knew my mom? Asked Mido. Yeah, we were on the same genin team. I'll tell you about her later because for now we have other things to do. I need you and Naruto to sign this marriage certificate, we need to take Mido to get her tattoos, and while I would also need to take you two to your new house within the compound, I'm afraid it's not ready yet, so you'll have to continue living at home for now. Said Tsum. Later that night. Are you ready for me to rock your world Naruto-kun? Asked Mido in a seductive voice. Naruto couldn't take his eyes off of Mido if he wanted, she was just so sexy to him that it took all of his training not to pounce on her right now. Are you sure you wish to do this Mido-chan, just because we're married now doesn't mean you have to do anything tonight. Said Naruto. Mido smiled at Naruto as she walked over to the bed with a visible sway in her hips, climbing into the bed she kissed him deeply before looking into his eyes. I know Naruto-kun, but I want to do this, I want you, I've wanted you for a long time, and I'm surprised I've waited this long. Now let's have our wedding night fun, but remember to be gentle as it is my first time. Said Mido. Very well Mido-chan. Said Naruto before leaning over and starting a makeout session. It was at this point that Shiro and Kasumi decided to leave the room so that their human partners can mate. Naruto and Mido cuddled together in the spoon position as they enjoyed the afterglow of their lovemaking. So. Naruto sama huh? Asked Naruto with an amused smirk. Don't get used to it, mister, I'll only be calling you that in bed. Now shut up and go to sleep, we do have to meet up with our team tomorrow. Said Mido. Now why did you have to go and ruin the mood by saying that? Said Naruto only getting a giggle out of Mido before they went to sleep. Two months later. Pirazin hadn't been happy at all to hear that Mido had married into the Inuzuka clan, but relented when Mido showed him a copy of their marriage certificate. From that day on Mido and Naruto noticed that Kakashi didn't pay much attention to them when it came to training, and he would take subtle shots at their relationship while preaching about the will of fire. The newlyweds just decided to keep to their own training, as they were already stronger than their teammates anyway. Things only got worse when Kiba found out about their marriage as he threw a huge tantrum and now challenges Naruto for Mido nearly every damn day. 
the ops came in the form of Naruto's and Mito's house being finished and them moving in, though they still visited Yuna, Toga, and Toka very often. Naruto also took Ino, Hinata, and Hana out on dates, all the girls had good times, with Hana already claiming Naruto as her alpha. Ino and Hinata were on cloud 9 as the boy they've had a crush on for a long time was returning their feelings. Mito had even gotten the chance to sit down with Tsum, and they talked about her mother, Kashina Yuzumaki, Mito was surprised of just how much she had in common with her mom. What made Mito the happiest though was knowing just how happy her mom was to be pregnant with her. Right now though Naruto and Mito found themselves in a rather interesting situation. They were out on their first C rank mission, and 10 minutes out of the village they had a run in with the demon brothers of Kiri. It turned out that their client Izuna lied about the difficulty of the mission because his home was in danger, after a vote they decided to continue. Naruto and Mito voted to continue so that they could help out the struggling country, Sasuke voted to go because he wanted to continue so that he could show off for Mito and get her to leave Naruto, and Sakura voted to go because Sasuke voted to go. Now though they have come across Abusa Mamachi who was apparently hired to kill Tazuna, he and Kakashi fought with Kakashi, revealing his Sharingan eye, before he was stupid enough to fall for an obvious trap. The situation now is that Naruto, Mito, Shiro, Kasumi, Sasuke and Sakura are surrounding Tazuna in a protective circle. Zabuza has created a water clone to maintain the water prison he had Kakashi trapped in while he approached the genin, killing intent radiating from his body. If you kids want to live long enough to play ninja another day then I suggest you give up the old man. Said Zabuza in a rough voice. Sasuke, Sakura and Tazuna were freaking out from the killing intent while Naruto, Mito and their partners seemed almost bored. You want to handle this Mito-chan or should I? Asked Naruto. I'll take this one Naruto-kun, it'll be fun to test my skills against someone other than you. Let's go Kasumi. Said Mito as he walked forward. Yes, mistress. Said Kasumi. So the little Inuzuka girl thinks she's tough, very well I'll kill you quickly before killing your friends and the old man. Zabuza. Please you won't pass me, I can tell you're strong, but you're nowhere near as strong as my husband. Said Mito as she drew to Sega and charged at Zabuza. Zabuza was surprised by Mito's sword, but quickly used his sword to block her attack, he was taken further by surprise by the force behind Mito's attack. Don't take me lightly Zabuza or you'll die. Said Mito. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.